What's happening, everyone? I'm James Lynch. UFC 301 now has a main event. It's going to be Alexander Pantoja taking on Steve Ursag. I was a little bit surprised by this. I didn't think the UFC would go this route with Ursag, and we're going to talk about him getting this title shot. Is it deserved? Is it not? Let's talk about the optics of all this getting put together. We'll also hear for some fighters as well who chimed in on this fight announcement yesterday as it was announced sort of late in the day here. Uh, but my initial thoughts were, um, yeah, I didn't think they'd go this route. I thought Mohamed Mokayev was going to get it. I even thought they'd take Royville again and get his rematch against Pantoja over someone like Ursag, who really hasn't done a whole lot in the UFC. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I'm saying that because he made his UFC debut in June last year. He hasn't even been in the UFC a full year, and he's getting a title shot. I'm trying to even remember the last time that happened that didn't involve a fighter coming over from another promotion like, say, Bellator or Strikeforce or something like that. But that, that's got to be in the history books of someone getting a title shot less than a year uh, of fighting uh, in, in, the, in the promotion because he'll be fighting in May, obviously, not there. Um, and a lot of fighters weighed in on this. We'll get, we'll get some of those fighter reactions as well. MMA fighting doing a good job with this article. So Muhammad Mukayev, obviously very upset. He was the one that I think figured was going to get the shot. I think a lot of people felt that way too. Uh, he says, uh, the F UFC just done. I've second them active, active winning streak in MMA flyweight history. I will take this belt soon. Never picked opponents, never pulled out of fights. Even though I wasn't healthy, never missed weight. I will be champion. You motivated me a lot. So obviously very frustrated here by Mokayev. Um, you look at the win streak. He's not lying. He has a very good win streak in the weight class. He's 23 years old. It would have been an interesting story to see him be the youngest champion. But I think the issue with Mokayev, and you know, let me know what you think in the comments here, he hasn't looked that great over the last couple of fights. Even the Alex Perez win, he sort of narrowly won that fight, and that was a fight that wasn't really that exciting. It wasn't the type of fight, like, you know, when you have a young fighter that's on their way up, um, you know, and really making some noise, usually they're doing, like, spectacular finishes or something, like, really, um, you know, prominent in the division, and we just haven't really seen that from him. And I know Mokayev hasn't been healthy. He mentioned it there in the tweets, you know, never pulled out of his fight. But I think that's actually worked against him. I think because he's fought injured, and, and listen, every fighter going into a fight is never 100%, but he's clearly been fighting with more than the average fighter, and it's come through in his performances, in my opinion, where he hasn't looked that good. You know, you go all the way back to the Malcolm Gordon fight, where Malcolm had him in a bit of trouble. Um, you know, Tim Elliott was a bit of a slow start in that one, and he gets the late finish there. He's just had fights that haven't been, like, screaming title shot. You know, I, I get it from his perspective. He's young. The wins, you can't take that away, but I, I just don't think he's looked like super impressive. So I kind of understand the UFC's point of view on this. Now, do I agree with it? Not necessarily. I'm a merit guy. I think as far as merit goes, I think Mokayev has earned it more over Urseg, but I understand it from an entertainment perspective where Urseg is a little bit more exciting and is putting on better, better performances. We'll talk about why that is in, in a second here. Um, but yeah, I think that's uh, that, that that's one of the reasons why Mokayev wasn't, wasn't picked in that fight. Now, let's look at some other options here or some other uh, reactions as well on this too uh you got um moicano saying pentoja literally cleaned out the division even before being champion or say got the gold ticket because of it again three fights getting the title shot megan anderson we can skip that one obviously she's going to back the Aussie guy this is an interesting one from charles johnson ufc giving ursig a title fight after two fights in the promotion is brutal to the division it's technically been three but um, so, so many guys working their way up with longer active win streaks finishes. My only guess is I'm assuming Pantoja asked for him, not saying he can't win, but what are the rankings for? So Johnson, one of the fighters, not happy with Ursa getting the shot. And again, I understand it from Johnson's perspective where he's been in the UFC a lot longer, you know, not that he would deserve a title shot, but I can understand only after a couple of fights there. And then you have obviously Jake Hadley surprisingly coming to the, coming to the defense of, uh, Mokayev. And then uh, you have Cody Durden supporting him. Anyway, so you're seeing all these reactions, including Brandon Royval says, Ursig looked good in his last fight. I'll be on weight ready to step in if anything happens. I'm not sitting front row watching my teammates and next fight square off. See, I think Mokayev should have done this, to be honest. He should have been like, I'll be the backup just in case. Like, listen, him tweeting about all this is not going to change the fight matchup. Royval at least is saying, look, like, I'll be the backup if you need me to. So, you know, that looks good in the eyes of the UFC. Again, is it fair? No, it's not. But again, this is something that Royville's kind of stepping up to the plate here. And um, but let's talk about Royville here quickly. He's got a case. I mean, he was not supposed to beat Brandon Moreno. At least that's, I don't think, the plan from the UFC. He gets the win. It was a split. It should have been unanimous. I thought he clearly won. Um, I, I think the move now is to do Royville and Mokaya. That's the fight to do. Put that together. If they're ready to go, I mean, I, I don't think they'll do it on 301 because Royville basically said title shot or bust. Like, I'm not going to fight someone else if I don't, in my not getting a title opportunity. So I think you do Royville and Mokayev at a later date. Maybe you do that in June in the Middle East or something. That that could be an option there. But I think that's the most obvious fight now with two fighters uh, coming up short, getting this uh, title bid as well. Um, let's talk about some other names that could have been considered here as well. Manel Kopp, um, you know, again, really exciting guy. I've been very high on him. He was someone I said would be UFC champion by the end of the year, but he had a, a couple stumbling blocks. And one of them being 
um, you know, his fight against Nicolau, he misses weight and the fight's canceled. They've since rescheduled that. But this was the golden ticket. This would have been cop had he made weight and beat Nicolau like I think most would have expected. Now, he obviously had an illness that he spoke about after the fight. But again, another situation, like I mentioned with Mokayev, he probably would have been better off just pulling out of the fight instead of having to go through the weight issue. I honestly think he would have been considered if if uh, cop had some sort of illness and he didn't feel like he could perform like sometimes there's a, a downside to to going through with fights because you don't look that good or in the case of cop his fight gets canceled now he's out of the running that's why they've rescheduled the fight with Nicolau. but i think you could have made a case for cop again the issue with cop though is you know he hasn't made weight like you can't you couldn't have given him the title shot after missing weight against Nicolau and then rewarding him with a title shot that wasn't going to work but what i meant was let's say he withdraws from that fight and, uh, you know, because he's not well, he might have got the title shot here. And I actually think that would have been a more uh, merit uh, driven one because he's got a lot of finishes. That's the big thing as well in terms of uh, who he's beat. And he's been in the UFC a little bit longer. And even his losses, both of them, the, you know, were, were close. Even the Pantoja loss that he had would have been close as well. So Cop would have been considered. And then the other name that I think would have been considered is Amir Al-Bazi. I don't know if he's 100 percent healthy, but. I think a lot of people also feel like Amir Al-Bazi didn't win his last fight. Go look at MMA decisions. His win over Kai Kara France. Two media members scoring the fight for Al-Bazi. Everyone else scoring it for France. I thought France won too. So in my opinion, he shouldn't have really been considered. So, I, you know, with all the optics put together, like I understand them going with Ursaig. I, I don't mind it. But I got to be honest, this is one of the most undeserving title shots I've seen before. Like, again, I don't hate the fight. I think it's going to be entertaining. But he's got three fights and they're not great wins either. Let, let's go have a quick look at Steve Ursaig's resume. And it's got nothing to do with him. You got to fight who you're given. I'm not talking about him, you know, picking fights or whatever. I'm just looking at the optics of this. You know, the, we, we always talk all the time about undeserved title shots. This has got to be up there here. So let, let's go over this. So he fights David Dvorak on short notice, beats him. There was a big upset at the time. Dvorak's ranked. That's a good win, but Dvorak's ranked a little bit lower and he gets the win. So that was a huge win. He fights Alessandro Costa, who's 13 and three, but he's not ranked. He gets a decision there. Okay, that's fine. Then he fights Matt Schnell, who is ranked and gets a finish. Everyone's like amazing, great performance. But let's look at the optics of Matt Schnell here. Like, I don't think this is the type of win that should get you a title shot. Schnell's 34 years old. He has not fought since 2022. And he's been finished in three of his last four fights. Like, that's not a good win to get you a title shot. So if we're going off like merit, Steve Ursig does not deserve the shot. Uh, beating Matt Schnell does not say much. I think there's a lot of flyweights right now would beat Matt Schnell. Nothing against Matt. It's just he's on the tail end of his career. I believe he actually... I don't know if he got released or he's, he's being pretty close to uh, to to not sticking around with the UFC anymore. So I think there's very much a case for people saying he doesn't deserve this. But again, timing is such a big thing in this sport. And Ursaig had the perfect timing. It's a fresh matchup for Pantoja. No rematches. No nothing. Um, again, Ursaig's been pretty exciting. Like he sort of made people want to see him get this opportunity because he's kind of come out of nowhere. Um, he looks like Michael Scott from The Office. You know, these are all types of things that people are probably going to uh, going to going to support here. Right. Um, so uh, that was a joke, obviously. And, and I'm not, not making fun of him. Steve Ursig's awesome. I, I got a chance to speak to him in Vancouver last year at UFC 289. Really good dude. So, yeah, like I get it. Like I get it. And I think it's going to be a good fight. But I mean, this will go down as one of the most undeserving title shots, in my opinion, if we're going off merit. And again, there's so many fighters that have had undeserved title shots. I could do a whole video on that. But uh, it's going to be a fun fight. Now, let's talk about the fact that this is the main event for UFC 301 because I do not think this is going to sell very well. I think there's going to be very little interest in this card. I think it's always a really bad business strategy to have the flyweights headlining UFC card. And I'm not disrespecting the fighters. I'm looking at this from a business perspective. I was the guy that was at the UFC card in Montreal all those, all those years ago when it was Demetrius Johnson and Horiguchi fighting. And they had to close off some of the sections in Montreal because people just weren't interested. And listen, I know that's one of the greatest fights as far as two flyweights together. But it's just the flyweight main events never typically do too well. And this is a result of something I talk about in all of my videos the UFC does too many events the fight that was supposed to headline this card was Alex Pereira and Jamal Hill they had to move it to UFC 300 because they were you know and I used this analogy before Dana White was the guy doing his homework the night before trying to put together UFC 300 because they left the main event to last and it bit them in the butt so they had to move Pereira and Hill to UFC 300 instead of UFC 301 Pereira and Hill absolutely should have been on UFC 300 or 301 because it's in Brazil Pereira's from Brazil you know that that fight would have been much bigger but you're headlining the card with this I mean, this is this is a tough sell. So I hope the pay-per-view does well. I mean, let, let's have a quick look at the card. It's decent, but this was going to happen when the UFC was stacking other cards like they were with UFC 299, UFC 300. You do less events, you're going to have more options with what you can put on this card. I'm looking at this main card right now. Pereira and Muradov, they just added that. Smith Petrino, Craig Borello. 
that doesn't scream pay-per-view to me, even the main event. So, like I said, this is going to be, and, and you're going to see this going forward. There's going to be a couple cards going forward that are, that are going to be a little bit weaker like this. And, you know, I, I just don't think this is going to get people to want to shelf out, you know, $70, $80 for a pay-per-view to watch this fight. It's going to be a good fight. Not saying that. Again, people always watch this video to, full, to its fullest because I always get people accusing me of bashing the fighters. I'm not. I'm saying from a business perspective, I don't think fans are going to be that much into this fight. And if the UFC wasn't so hell-bent on doing as many events as they're doing, um, you know, then we wouldn't be in this situation. So my final verdict on this is I think the fight's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to the fight. I'm going to watch the pay-per-view. I have to. It's part of my job. But Steve Ersteg is only getting this title shot because of timing. If we're going off merit, if we're going off other things that he's done in his UFC career, he does not deserve it. But that's not up to me. It's not up to him either. It's up to the UFC. They're the ones that book the fight. So I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. What was your reaction to hearing the title fight? Um, do you think he deserves it? You think they should have given it to someone else? I want to hear your opinions on all this stuff because uh, I, I think it's important to kind of talk about this. And uh, who do you think wins the fight? I'm going with Pantoja. Again, Ursaic's fought no one close to Pantoja. Right now, I'm leaning Pantoja. I think he's going to be like a two to three to one favorite, I would think. Just because, again, Ursaic hasn't proved a ton. Maybe he shows us that he can in this fight. That's what's always interesting about fighting. Anyone can win a fight, but uh, it's going to be very interesting. So follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, at Lynch on Sports. If you have any other video ideas or topics you want me to discuss, leave a, leave, leave a suggestion in the comments. Always like to hear from you guys. I'm James Lynch. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.